Hey guys, how you doing? Call me nuts right away. I played your jazz back in 2010 when I played up here before you took over. First of all, congrats on last season. What are you here to talk about this season? So that's what my question is. Coach, what have you been doing or what are you going to do in camp to keep the mindset? To, I know your big philosophy is 1 0. That's all that matters. But like keeping them on, like I know they got their rings and all that. But how do you go on to making a bigger run in the playoffs and keeping that mindset? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, you know, just building off of last season, you know, kind of keeping momentum going right now, um, building on you know, the success that we did have uh, will be big. Uh, you know, I think we had a, a pretty good off season in the spring, and uh, you know, it took a lot of reps and saw a lot of guys, you know, get more reps than, than normal, I guess, uh, at certain spots, and, um, and we had a good summer from what I hear. Um, you know, a lot of guys in town working out, and, you know, getting ready for the fall. Um, but just, you know, kind of like you mentioned, you know, with just taking it game by game, you know, we get a chance to come into camp and focus on ourselves for a few weeks um, and, you know, line up at some point and get ready for West Texas and, and get these uh, guys going. I think, um, you know, these are three seniors up here now. Uh, spent year six, I think, for each one of them. Uh, so quite a few years up here and, and uh, you know, relied on them with their leadership and they got a good senior class and you know, it's a great group of players that's here and uh, just being able to build off that, uh, you know, I think you know, these guys should be able to, to, to do a lot of that work um, getting you know, these guys ready. So. This question is for the captains. Um, do you believe your teammates are just as hungry as last season or has even resting on their laurels? Um, yeah, that's always the, the question if, if you start winning. Um, winning is great. Uh, we haven't done a lot of that around here since we've been here. Uh, but I don't think that deters from what we want to do this year. Uh, this is definitely a new team. Um, we've lost some guys. We're going to have some new guys step up. I think that's a challenge that we look forward to. Um, this is going to show our, our depth of our program. Um, I think we're a different program in general. And I know these uh, guys up here with me are ready to take on another challenge of, of, of repeating. Yeah, and just to piggyback, piggyback off that, um, I think it's important just going into camp and trying to trying to instill what the, the mindset of the team is, um, understanding that what we did last year was, was great then, but like it does play root to even say going one and on now. We can't look back at what we did because that's not the same team. So we got to understand now as leaders uh, that there's a different mindset going into the year. Last year it was under the radar, like um, we had a chip on our shoulder, knowing that no, we like other teams in the army weren't thinking about us as a team that was going to be a co-champion. And this year now that we've made a splash, it's going to be different. So uh, we got to understand that uh, we're playing with pressure, but it, the pressure is is good. And I think that as leaders, we can kind of guide, direct the team in the right direction. Yeah, yeah I think the I think our team is honestly hungrier this year because we started winning, and uh, no one likes to lose. I know, no one like people agree don't like to lose. So um, I feel like once we started winning, people don't want to go back to that that mindset that we just lose all the time and we just uh, we just roll over people. So we have a lot of freshmen coming in like hungry. A lot of people that didn't get to play last year are stepping up to the rules now, and just they just want to keep winning. So I think our team is just ready to keep keep this uh, this train going and just having fun this year. So yeah. Here you were kind of the hunters. And this year you may be the hunted. So do you do anything different? Do you plan differently? Uh, how does how does that look going into the season for y'all? I don't think it. It doesn't necessarily change uh, how we play. We gotta understand that what we do, uh, we gotta we gotta focus on, on the little things. We can't look at the big picture of yeah, there's there's teams hunting us, like we gotta be aware of that, but also it's about doing our job each and every day, like um, each practice, like each rep. It's about what we do and not about what other people do. So I think carrying that mindset is about us and it never was about anybody else. And understand that if we take care of business, there's nobody that's going to stop us. So it's like uh, just kind of carrying that, even regardless of 
if we're the ones that are the hunters, um, I think if we do our job, then it doesn't matter. Uh, yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, being the hunted, you know, I think for us, I mean, we're going to get ready like we do every week. Um, you know, that's kind of the mentality that we've always had. And, and um, you know, we're going to prepare each week, uh, for, you know, for that opponent and, you know, get ready for that football game. And, um, you know, I think whether the, the, the target's on us or if it's on somebody else, I think, um, you know, come Saturdays, you know, we're going to put our best foot forward and go compete and go play hard and, and um, you know, we'll try to win a football game. So, um, I think we've got a pretty exciting schedule ahead of us and I think we're all pretty fired up for it. We don't want to really um, hang on on last season, but why do you think you guys are able to break through and finally win a hard night championship? I think uh, just being a guy that's been around the program for a while, I think last year was uh, a little bit different in the, the sense of leadership, but, and it's not um, just us three. I think position group to position group, we had guys that stepped up and lead and led. And, um, it, it really helped when you have a leader, an upperclassman at every spot that is pretty much leading the way. And uh, I think I think we we're just ready to win. Um, it was something that we had worked towards, and everyone had bought into the system and the program. And um, year after year, I think we just knew that it was eventually going to kind of fall into place, and um, it eventually did. Um, yeah, Michael Connor said we bought in like for the last couple of years, and he's just been like we just we just go with the most, go with like with the flow of things. But this year, like we started, we started like to understand like we actually have something special here. And we had um we had like Connor said we had a lot of seniors, and we had a lot of like, upperclassmen step up to the role of leaders and help help the younger guys out and start like taking that leadership role. So like at the end of the day, we just all bought into the to our roles and to the style of program we've been part of for so many years. I think it's about, Coach Baines always sits on it um, in our meetings and stuff. It's, it's about getting guys, 110 guys, or however many guys are on the team to go in the same direction. And I think if enough of us as leaders can start directing that, then it changes it. I think it's all over the way last year. You know, just to, to sum up that, you know, there were great responses by these guys. Um, you know, when I look back at last season, I think it was more of we had a bunch of guys that cared about each other. Um, you know, they played for each other each week. Um, I, don't, I don't think anybody cared about accolades or you know, I did this, I did that. Nobody cares on the one football game. Uh, and that was the best part about the team, you know, when uh, we needed a certain unit to make a play, they made it. If the offense needed to score or we needed to get in position to get the field goal, we did that. And if the kick needed to be made, we made a kick. If the defense needed to make a stop, we made a stop, and, and these guys just did an awesome job. It was, it was a special thing to be a part of, um, just watching them compete each and every game and, um, you know, just continue to build momentum as the season kept going. And, and um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a special season to be a part of, for sure. Hi there. Hi there. <laughs> any uh, news about any outstanding new recruits, any new meet that uh, – you got to replace the guys that they have out. I think we're bringing in roughly about 28 guys. Um, you know, I think, I think we got a really good group coming in. I mean, we'll find out here in the next few weeks, you know, who we feel can really push us. Um, you know, we have a few transfers coming in uh, at some positions that, you know, we feel like we needed a little bit more depth. Um, running back was one of them. Um, just for depth purposes a little bit. And then, um, you know, we graduated a lot of guys on defense. Uh, we were able to bring in a few guys last spring uh, that were around for all spring practice and those things. And, uh, and then, you know, we have a few transfer linebackers coming in with just you know, the graduation of, you know, seven defensive players in our front seven, you know, graduating. Um, you know, so kind of excited to get started with them. Um, you know, obviously they got a lot of learning to do. Hopefully they can pick it up pretty fast because you know, these things turn around pretty quickly as we get ready for our first game. And, um, you know, we get rolling pretty, pretty fast. So. Um, but I think we've got a good class. I mean, um, you know, we had a, a good group. Uh, coaches did an outstanding job uh, recruiting and bringing in this group. And, and um, you know, we didn't, we didn't need to bring in a ton of players this year. Uh, last year's graduating class, I think, was 23, 24. Seniors, I think this year's is very similar, and, and I think a lot of that has to do with the COVID season in between a little bit. 
Um, so just a, a pretty heavy veteran group, you know, last year and this year again. Um, where we should bring in a lot of players, but I know we're excited about them and looking forward to seeing them put the pads on and see what they can do. Now you mentioned starting the season, um, you are heading to Texas back to back, then you travel to CSU Pueblo, and uh, starting three games, tough games on the road. How do you think that's going to uh, affect the y'all? Will it affect the beginning of the season as you progress to the next games when you start being at home? Um, we'll be road warriors for the first three weeks, right? I mean, you know, when we go to Canyon, and you know, Canyon's like traveling to some of the Armac games, and it's not that far, you know, and, and it's actually closer than some of them. Um, you know, really the first one is going out to Midland Odessa for Birmingham Basin. And, and we have, we've never played them, not that I know of anyway. Um, so, you know, excited to play a new program and those things and um, get an opportunity to play two teams out of Lone Star and then, you know, have a good chance to play CC Pueblo, um, you know, they're in their home stadium. Uh, you know, got a tough, tough schedule, um, you know, this season, a tough schedule out of the gate too. Um, you know, so it's a big challenge. And, I think we've been preparing for that. We talked about it, you know, in the spring. And you know, these guys who are here have done a great job, you know, over the summer getting ready and, and getting ready for the fall. I think uh, I think it'll bond our group a little bit more. Um, you know, just travel sometimes and going on the road and, and doing those things bring, brings your team a little closer together. Um, you know, I would say road trips are fun, but they're a little bit more fun when you're winning as well. And, and um, you know, hopefully we can do that, you know, a little bit. And, Continue to build week by week, but uh, you know I think you know it seems like Pueblo is a really long way away, you know, and, and uh, we still got a month before we play our first game, and um, you know so I think we're just gonna take it you know week by week and day by day. Yeah, I uh, I actually think sometimes going away on going on the road is, is good for us. Uh, you can't do anything here. You can't be distracted by anything. You can't do anything on a Friday night. You can't go see your parents for dinner. Like there's nothing. There's none of that. It's all football, it's all we're like gonna be focused on is West Texas when we go down there and we'll come back and we'll get ready for another team and um, just week by week I don't think the, the road games really affect us that, that much. Uh, I think it's actually kind of kind of beneficial to sleep, sleep in a hotel, no mom and dad down the road, it's it's nice. Uh, and I think I think we're ready for the challenge of, of playing two teams out the gate that we haven't played. Uh, I think it's it's something that we're gonna we're gonna prove something to some people and um, I think Pueblo is always a fun one too. So those three games are going to be good, good starts of the season. Uh, how do you think you it's going to affect you with playing at KD O'Reilly Field, and how do you think uh, what the effect on the program with the new Mountain View Bowling Events Complex that's due to open in 2000? It might be a little uh, like a little different. It might be a different environment at first for sure, but at the end of the day, it's still a football game, and um, we're just lucky to. I have a field to play on at the end of the day. So, um, <laughs> but um, I don't think it's going to affect our team too much because we're usually not focused on that type of thing. Just we're like, we're taught to, you know, just focus on the, on the game. So it might be not a lot of fans there, but, but um, so I'm just fumbling my words. But um, we're just going to be focused at the end of the day. It doesn't even matter where we're going to play on. Not going to high school field. It doesn't really matter. We're just going to be locked in and having a good time. I think there's a, it's about playing our brand football. Um, at the end of the day, like regardless of where we play, it's that doesn't affect how we play. Um, and I think it, as leaders, we can we can get our team understanding that. Then, like it shouldn't it shouldn't be a problem. Um, obviously, it's going to be we're fortunate to be getting that new stadium, and it's going to be a blessing when, when it's here. Um, but for this season, uh, we can't focus on that. We just got to focus on our brand football. Yeah, I guess to touch on the new stadium, it's going to be something sweet for this program, and I think it's something that this place is, has needed uh, pretty badly. A little bit of a renovation is, is huge for a step up in uh, recruiting and uh, getting guys here and getting guys to stay. I think it's huge for our program. Um, but as for us playing on the turf, it's we can only control what we can control. And so we can't control the weather that day. You can't control how you're feeling that day. You just got to go out and play. And, play in the parking lot they like to say like we'll, we'll play them anywhere right so uh, I think I think we're looking forward just to having some home games uh, I think that's especially like the older guys we just wanted to play in Gunnison so it's all we're worried about
You know, from a re renovation standpoint, it's not going to go off. I think everybody's excited. Um, you know, it's been a long time coming. You know, former players in here, um, you know, that have wanted to see that, you know, stadium redone for a long time. You know, and, and not only for our alumni in football, but, you know, our university our community. You know, it's going to be a fantastic venue. And, uh, you know, it should be a, a, a top first tier, top of the class type of venue. You know, it should be, it should be awesome. And I think we're excited about it. Obviously, you guys have seen the renderings and those things. And, you know, they started demolition. And, you know, I, did, I was out on, on Katie Rady Field the other day with our coaches, and I, I didn't even know the press box had been demoed already. And I uh, saw that, and it's, I mean, wiped out and gone. So, um, you know, I think we're excited for the future. Um, you know, seeing what that facility will look like, lights and turf and locker rooms and all the amenities a, a first-class stadium should have. And, I've said it for a long time, you know, I always thought Mountain Bowl and Gunnison, you know, is one of the greatest settings in college football. And, and now it's just going to be enhanced that much more with a new facility. Um, not only for players, our players, visiting team players, visiting teams, their fans, our fans. Uh, it, it's just going to elevate everything to a whole new level, I think, um, when that project is done. You know, for these guys, and they, they all say the right things. I think it's bittersweet for them. You know, at the end, when they don't get a chance to, you know, finish their careers out and mount their goal, I think that's a tough thing. Uh, so I feel for them, but at the end, you know, I think they know, you know, in the long run, that uh, whole project, it, 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 you know, we talked about it when these guys came in. And we kept talking about how we were getting them to the stadium, <laughs> which had never happened. Um, but, you know, but it's always going to be there for them. And, you know, when it's all said and done and that thing is complete, you know, I think they'll, they'll appreciate, uh, you know, that thing being completed and then having a big part of that.